Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Monday Morning Podcast for Monday, November 28th, 2016, and I'm doing on November 29th, a Tuesday. What's going on? How are you? Um, I am okay. In case you were wondering, I got a little, uh, I don't know, I got a little, I've been fighting off this cough for like two fucking weeks. Who's kidding who, right? And I, uh, you know, I was fighting it off, and it was getting worse, and Nia kept going, why don't you take some medicine? Why don't you take take some of this Mucinex? Right? Holy shit. Hat, fucking my hat's off to anybody that can get fucking drunk off of that stuff. Jesus Christ. That's like peppermint schnapps times fucking 20. It really is. Mucinex is like schnapps on steroids. It's just, you know... One of the, you know, the other ways have these dumb cha- challenges like the mannequin challenge. I don't understand. What is the challenge? Just hold still as somebody pans around the room. That's a fucking challenge. How the fuck did we go from faking a lunar landing? Faking that. Faking out the whole fucking Russians. And they got so freaked out that they, they, went, they went on a hissy fit for the next fucking 30 years before they finally went broke, right? In the early 90s. Because we, we accepted the challenge of the faking of the lunar land. Maybe we even got there. The lunar land, landing challenge. Now we're fucking, oh, oh, the mannequin. Oh, planking. Yeah, I lay face down and somebody takes a picture of me. Oh, dude, that's epic. Jesus Christ. I don't understand. You, what the, you know what it is? Is these fucking goddamn cunts. Young people these days. You know, no offense, right? God bless you. It's they fucking spend their whole lives with these fucking real, virtual reality goddamn things on their head. They're playing video games. They don't have any skills. The second you take the fucking laptop, you take the fucking laser tag thing, the paint gun, whatever the fuck technology it is, the thing that, you know, that new thing that, that, that they're trying to get old people into, the virtual reality. Like, like living a fucking life isn't, isn't enough. Like, I want to leave this fucking world. Really, you, you saw it all? Huh? You been to Venice? Rode a boat through the fucking canal? You haven't done shit. All right, so this is the deal. They don't fucking know how to fucking do anything. This is such an old man rant. Ah, they don't know how to do anything. They're just fucking literally laying face down in the road, you know, and somebody takes a picture. Is is this? It's, it's epic. It's fucking epic. Now, granted, in the 70s, they did have pet rocks, so I might be full of shit, but you know what it is? The great thing about being old is you lack perspective when you talk about anything new. You're just like, that's different. It scares me. Um, <clears throat> I don't get the mannequin challenge. I don't, you know, and that, that was like the, when they also had the, uh, whatever the Harlem Shake was. Initially, it was a dance, and then it was just that stupid YouTube thing, the ice bucket challenge, all of that shit. You know, if your instincts aren't immediately to not be part of the group, um, I don't know what that says about you. I don't know what it says about me that I immediately ice buck or everybody's doing it. Well, then fuck it. I'm not doing it. <laughs> <coughs> oh, antisocial, sick, freckled headed, bald cunt. What's wrong with you today? Hang on a second. Ricola. <coughs> yeah, so I've been fighting this fucking thing off. You know, I have a bad feeling it might be one the cigar that I got. That there's something in there, some sort of bacteria, because I was fine, and then I smoked with Verzi on his birthday, and then I smoked with Bobby Kelly at fucking Comics Come Home, back-to-back nights, and then I just had this fucking cough. You know, it's not like you inhale the goddamn things. It's not like I smoke one every fucking day. I smoke one, like, once every two weeks. Oh, they've been on a little bit of a bender, okay? Um, so anyway, so Sunday night, You know, it's been a good 15 days since I smoked. All right, I'll smoke another one. Went down with my buddy. We watched the Broncos-Chiefs game. Arguably the greatest Sunday night football game ever. I lost track of how many fucking lead changes there were. Um, Just, you know, and I wasn't drinking. I haven't drank since Thanksgiving. I kind of bottomed out Thanksgiving, right? You know, let's back. I had a great Thanksgiving, by the way. Great fucking Thanksgiving. Um. We ended up, did I talk about that already? I think I already did. Maybe I didn't. I don't remember. Oh, I started talking. I hadn't gone to it yet. That's right. That's what it was. Listen to this shit. We went to somebody else's for Thanksgiving and everything was fucking delicious. Every side was fucking, not only delicious, it was a home run. 
It's the best Thanksgiving I've had since I've been a kid when I ate at my, mo- my parents' house. You know, my mother cooks, so it just automatically tastes right because that's the only Thanksgiving you know. Right? But at, once you move out, you're eating other people's food, and no matter what, it's always a little bit different. It's not quite the same. You get that feeling of, fuck, it's over. I have to pay rent now. I'm going to get old. Right? I'm going to be that person. What happened to him? And then I fucking die and blah, 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 and all that bullshit, right? So anyways, um, we had a great fucking Thanksgiving. And I had this fucking bottle of bourbon that I brought. That was my responsibility. Where the fuck is my phone? I got to give this thing a shout out, man. And you know how they say you can't judge a book by, by its fucking cover? Um, I actually judged this bottle just by how cool the fucking bottle looked. So let me scroll through my... It was called Angels and something or other. By the way, it rained like a motherfucker out here, and I have water collecting up on my roof again. Fucking cunts. It's unbelievable. It's just fucking... It's just, it's just not even right. So I got to get the third fucking people out here to see if they know how to fix it. Ah, God damn it! I thought I took a picture of it. No, nah, I got to find it. Hang on a second. You know what? I'm going to hit pause. I'll hit pause. All right, I found it. Angel's Envy. It's a Kentucky bourbon. God damn it, was that delicious. And uh, me and two other people, uh, we finished the bottle. And uh, I don't know. I got like to my last one. And I was just like, you know what? I think this, uh, I think it's time for me to shut it down. You know? Every once in a while, the drinking just gets a little bit too fucking far. And then I just shut it down. So I walked away. Cold turkey. Thanksgiving night. Cold turkey. I fucking walked away from it. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to lie to you. I miss it. <laughs> it's only been four days. I'm still thinking about you. I'm sending it letters and shit. Um, yeah, I'm just going to shut it down probably until, um, I'd say, maybe the Rose Bowl. New Year's Day or whatever. I already got to shut it down. I got a fucking kid coming, so it's over. You know what? You know what, people? I got to be honest. I had a great run. I got the stories, you know. Spent a few few hours in jail. I mean, I've done, you know, went to court. I had the whole, you know, had to apologize to people. I, I had a very full experience with alcohol, you know. Talked to some chicks that were way out of my league, you know. I, I, I did it. I had the whole thing, you know? <laughs> Stayed on the outskirts of bar fights to make sure that I didn't get pummeled. <coughs> so that's it. So anyways, um, believe it or not, as bad as my cough sounds, it's way better than it was fucking yesterday. I was gonna, wasn't going to put you through that shit. So anyways, so Sunday night, yeah, I smoked another one of those cigars. And yesterday I woke up and just was having a fucking coughing fit. Granted, I was already run down. So yesterday, um, I didn't do shit. I got to tell you, that was like the greatest six hours of my life not doing shit. But somewhere in that six hour, uh, after the six hours, I was going out of my fucking mind. I don't know how you guys do it, you know? Not you guys, just whoever the fuck is out there that just can just truly take a goddamn day off. I, I go fucking nuts after six hours. It was great. I laid there. I watched like two, three episodes of... Um, Westworld, getting caught up. I'm up to like episode uh, six I'm going to watch today, right? And um, loving that show. Although you, you can't watch more than two or three in a day. It's just too much, man. It's like, you just got to be, you know, it's a lot of shit going on to kind of take in. And then also having now doing my own little show that's only a half hour. When I look at that show, I just think of like how fucking long Did it take them to do this? And I'm going to sit here and I'm going to watch it in two days and then be that douche going, when's season two coming out? You know, it's like it's a fine bottle of wine and I'm just going to chug the thing. You know, after the third glass, I'm not really tasting it anymore because I'm so hammered. I might as well be drinking like fucking red, white, and blue beer or some shit, right? Just doesn't seem right. So, anyways, that's what I did yesterday and... um, I'm feeling much better, thank Christ. So, um, by the way, today is November 29th, which is uh, the five-year anniversary since the passing of one of the funniest and greatest people I ever met, Patrice O'Neill. And speaking of which, there are still uh, some tickets left 
for the uh, the fifth annual Patrice O'Neill Comedy Benefit. Um, all the proceeds after we pay for the uh, the venue, of course, our only expense. Um, you know, goes to all of his loved ones. It's been a tremendous success. And this year we have, we have, um, let's get the whole lineup here, for God's sakes, for God's sakes. We got Leslie Jones. We got Rich Foss. We got Bobby Kelly. Keith Robinson, Gary Gullman, Dan Soder, Soda, right, and myself. Um, it's going to be another great year of um, oh, just getting to see all those people. You know, I never get to see them anymore because I'm always out here gigging on the road or living out here in L.A., ba 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 So um, that's going to be uh, Tuesday, February 21st at the New York City Center, and... Um, you know, it's just a it's just a great event, and um, thank you to everybody who's come to it in the past years. And um, you guys have done a wonderful thing, um, keeping all his loved ones comfortable. And uh, very proud of that whole charity thing because um, you know, as tragic as it was that he was gone, I'm very proud of the fact that all of his friends stepped up and that all of his loved ones are comfortable because I know that that's what he would have been concerned with. So with that, um, I'm actually doing another benefit. For those of you who can't make it to New York City, if you're in the L.A. area and you would like to, um, you'd like to help out on another benefit, uh, I have another buddy of mine that died. It's what happens when you get into your 40s, man. It's fucking brutal. Is uh, A couple of your buddies die too young, man. It's awful. This guy, Pete Cummins, I started out with him in um, 1992. Um, did stand up with him from 92 to 99 and then he moved on to writing with National Lampoon. He did some stuff for the UFC. Just a great guy. Unfortunately, <coughs> um, had a heart attack a few weeks ago and, uh, about a month ago. So, uh, Tuesday, December 6th at the Laugh Factory, I'll be doing a headlining set there and, um, a bunch of Pete's friends from back in the day, a bunch of comics. We haven't all been on the same show in forever. Probably 20 years will be, uh, going on. Um, earlier in the night. Uh, it's going to be a great thing, and uh, it's in memory of him. So there you go. So enough with the uh, friends of mine that have passed away. Unfortunately, um, let's talk about some shit here. I, I, I got uh, to give a shout-out to fucking Nico Rosberg winning his first Formula One championship. Um, the final few laps of that race were amazing, right? For those of you who are not into it, basically what the situation was... Lewis Hamilton had won the last three. Nico Rosberg had never won. They both drive for Mercedes, okay? So Nico's the young upstart. Lewis is the grizzled vet, even though they're both fucking young. It was kind of like Days of Thunder if both both people look like fucking Tom Cruise is basically it, right? It's like two Tom, the old Tom Cruise, right? Scientology Tom Cruise versus fucking, um, what was that movie that they were all in? Where they were the 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 socias and the greasers. The fuck was that movie called? I knew that one. Ah, god damn it. What was it called? Matt Dillon was in it. Emilio Estevez. Estevez. Uh, the dirty dancing guy, Roadhouse guy. The karate kid was in it. Tom Cruise was in it. Who else was in that fucking movie? Everybody was in that fucking movie. Everybody, like, there was like nine people in that fucking movie. They all went, uh, C. Thomas Howell. They all went on to star in movies that made, I would love to see how much fucking box office every, every guy that starred as a greaser in that movie ended up making, you know? <clears throat> you gotta hate being the one fucking greaser that didn't make it, right? That's when you just gotta look at yourself like, dude, what the fuck? Everybody in this ensemble cast, I gotta find out what it is now. All right, Tom Cruise. IMDB. How do you spell Cruise wrong? I somehow spelt it with two U's. Hey, U's. Tom fucking Cruise. Two U's. All right. There he is smiling, looking sort of normal, as normal as he possibly can. Whoa, whoa. The outsiders. Oh, the outsiders. All right. Here we go. Let's, let's, this is, this is the fucking lineup. See Thomas Howell. Matt Dillon, Ralph Macchio, Patrick Swayze, Rob fucking Lowe, Emilio Estevez, Tom Cruise. All right? That alone, right there. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, the first seven guys all went on to star in movies. Tom Cruise alone has done billions in box office. Matt Dillon, the amount of money he's done. Ralph Macchio, the fucking karate kid. Patrick Swayze, Dirty Dancing Alone. Forget about Ghost, right? When they were in the claymation class. And when and he comes up behind her and they go, Oh, all the time of my life. Whoopi Goldberg grabbing your tits. I swear, Emilio Estevez, right? He was in Stakeout. He was in fucking uh, The Breakfast Club. Um, he was in the cowboy movies, right? He played Billy the Kid. You, come on, you know how all these fucking people are. And you got a guy like Glenn Withrow. The fuck happened to him? Diane Lane, she was in a bunch. Leif Garrett, Jesus Christ, he sold a bunch of albums. Tom Waits was in that fucking movie. Then there was a William Smith who played the store clerk. He went by William. If he went by Will, you know, could have been a whole different story. <clears throat> So anyways, I don't even know what the fuck I'm talking. Oh, yeah. So Nico Rosberg, right? So here's the deal. The way the points worked out was Lewis Hamilton had to win the fucking race. Provided Nico didn't crash. All right. If Nico was going to finish the race, Lewis had to win the race. And Nico had to become in fourth place or worse. And then Lewis would have won his fourth in a row. Okay. It's been a lot of three peating out there. Four. Not nobody. Who the fuck does four in a row? You never see that shit, right? So it comes down to the last. All Nico had to do was finish in third place, and no matter what Lewis Hamilton did, the shit was over. So you get down to like five fucking laps to go. Nico Rosberg, he's in third place. He's a fucking lunatic. He passes, I think it was a Red Bull car, and, and all the guys, I love the guys who announce it. They're always so fucking, oh, oh, oh. Like whenever there's a pass, oh, 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 God. They're always doing that shit. It's like, dude, do you have money in that car? Is that your son in there? I mean, half the reason we're watching this shit is to see him crash. It's like watching hockey. Half of it's to watch the game. The other half is to watch somebody beat the fuck out of somebody. I want want to see somebody spin around a little bit. You know? I want to see a fender. Fender! Right? So, anyways. uh, So it gets down to the last five laps. Nico goes around whoever the fuck was in second place. Hulkenberg or, or, or fucking uh, one of those other guys, or Timo Nikonen, Timo Solani. I don't know any of, the, any of the other drivers yet. It's my first year watching it, right? He fucking passes the guy. Now he's in second place. So now Lewis is like, what the fuck? So Lewis Hamilton starts slowing down, trying to let the third and fourth place cars catch up, which they're doing. All right? Now, they're a fucking team. They're on the same team. So evidently, when the head dude at Mercedes... You know, if you're on the Mercedes teams, if your team calls you and tells you to do something, you're not supposed to disobey a direct order. I'm telling you, this is like Top Gun and fucking (coughs) Days of Thunder. Sorry. It's just a little touch of a bowl of people, right? So he gives, they give Lewis a direct order going, Lewis, uh, you got to drive faster here. Come on, we want to win this race. And Lewis just says, he just says back into the radio, on TV, basically said, um, well, I'm, I'm still in first place and I'm comfortable with my current position. Basically meaning like, I'm not going to drive any fucking faster and I'm good enough that even if Nico's right on my ass, I know he's not going to try to go around me, you know, risking crashing because he's got it. So for the last five fucking laps, you are just on the edge of your fucking seat. Like, is this guy in third place going to go around Nico Rosberg? Um, he didn't. Lewis Hamilton disobeyed a direct order. I believe Robert Duvall came out in the end and started screaming at somebody. I can't remember, but um, it was kind of funny. Like whenever, like they're both on the podium, which was almost every race this year. Nico and Lewis like wouldn't even look at each other. It was fucking like, oh my god, I'm not even talking to you right now. I'm like so like not even talking to you right now. Like it was that whole fucking energy. So when Nico wins the thing they actually shook hands and there was some fucking clown interview and i'm going oh i kind of blocked the shot can you guys do that again it was great and then they just sort of begrudgingly shook hands or whatever and the guy just goes oh that's great it's it's all good again it's something like that it's like dude it's very far from all good again so um i believe the season starts up again either the end of march or the or beginning of april 
And uh, I jumped on this year after they raced in Monaco, and I had a great time fucking watching it. I actually started to think of the sheer amount of fucking money it must cost to have a goddamn, to run a Formula One team. I can't imagine how much fucking money. You got to ship that car around the fucking world like nine times. And you know you got a couple of other cars you got to bring with it. It's got to cost you a billion dollars. It has to. Does it, Bill? Have you ever tried to ship even your fucking Prius to Connecticut? No. So then you really don't know how much it costs. All right, you got me. Whatever. I know it's got to cost a lot of fucking money there, right? So, anyways, anybody watch Ohio State, Michigan? I know this is kind of old games, but I don't give a fuck. Did you guys watch that? It's one of the best games I've seen between those two in a long fucking time. And um, Michigan just kept fucking up when they got the ball. They had the goddamn game one. Do you notice how what's-his-face there? The, uh, for whatever reason, I can never remember their last name, the fucking coach in Michigan. Jim Harbaugh. Do you notice he was wearing the Woody Hayes glasses? I actually had a theory that if they won, he was going to take the glasses off on their fucking logo on the 50-yard line and step, stomp on them. You know, like after Jewish people get married, they step on the fucking glass. He was going to do that with the fucking, his, his Woody Hayes glasses. I love that he called out the referee and all that shit. You know, I'm not saying I 100% agreed with them and all that shit, but, uh, you know, I thought they got the call right on that first down. I stood up, dude. When I saw live action, I was like, he didn't get it. He didn't get it. And then I saw, ah, oh, fuck, he got it. I thought he got it anyways. Um, but all my Michigan buddies, they were all texting me. That was a home job and all this type of shit. So who do you like, guys? It's probably going to be Alabama. Right, that had a nice, had an easy time with fucking uh, Auburn. You see the kicker for Auburn? He grew up in an Alabama family, Roll Tide family, and Alabama didn't give him a scholarship, so he, he, he goes to fucking Auburn now, and his grandfather calls him Turncoat. Fucking lunatics down there, right? It's Gary Danielson, the whole game keeps going. He goes, Turncoat, kicking it for three. <coughs> I don't even think this podcast... He's remotely funny, but maybe maybe he's just laughing at me, coughing up a fucking lung here. Um. Anyway, so it's going to be Alabama, Alabama Crimson Tide, and I'm going to say it's going to be Ohio State for the championship. And here's old Billy Redface, having only watched about 15 college games this year, having never played beyond the third grade level. This is my prediction. All right, organized, anyways. I played enough pickup football for the first time I ever threw out my back was playing fucking football. And uh, it's never been the same, you know? No, it's not the first time. First time was when that kid put me in the figure four leg lock in fourth grade outdoor recess. That's the first time I threw it out. The next time was playing football. And then the third time was another wrestling thing. I tried to lift my younger brother up over my head like Tony Atlas. And the, the upper third of my spine folded, it felt like. And, uh, you know... That's given me problems ever since then, you know? It's probably why I lean on the mic stand. Anyways, plowing ahead here. I think it's going to be it's going to be fucking Ohio State, Alabama. Obviously, I'm picking the number one and two teams. And I think uh, Alabama beats Ohio State this time simply because I thought Ohio State had a lot of problems with that defense there in Michigan. Um. And I think Alabama's defense is even better, and Alabama's offense is not going to make the fucking mistakes that Michigan's um, offense made. You know, you don't watch an Alabama team and they fumble a fucking snap on the one yard line. They just don't do shit like that. You know what I mean? Because what's his face, Nick Saban, that lunatic? He probably fucking waterboard you. How angry a dude? You know that guy makes me feel good about my anger when I see that guy. I was joking about this. I did. Uh, Jeff Cesario's podcast, and we were fucking joking about my favorite fucking thing to do is to watch Alabama going in like down by seven at halftime. I love when the halftime reporter comes up and starts talking to Nick Saban and the, the look of fucking anger on his face. All he wants to do is go in the locker room and call everybody's mother a cunt that's wearing his uniform, right? And But he's got to sit there and talk to some chick on the side, like, going like, so why do you think it is you're down by eight? And he has to just sit there. You know he just wants to slap the wig right off her fucking head, but he doesn't do it. He doesn't do it. He sits there with his fucking, I don't know what it is on his head, you know? 
he makes Donald Trump look like fucking uh, Fabio. I'm trying to think of somebody who has good hair. Who the fuck even has good hair? And you never even know anymore, right? Everybody goes around. They get they get the troops from the back, you know, peeling. But the potatoes get put right up on the front line now. Isn't that what they do? And everybody goes swimming, and nobody knows what's going on, right? I tell you, it takes a real man like myself to walk around looking like Charlie Brown. I'm telling you, a redheaded Charlie Brown. Um, anyways, let's read some advertising here for this week, everybody. Let's see what we got here on the docket. How about those Bruins finally winning a game, right? The second I start watching them, they go into a three-game fucking skid. Just let you know what a big, what a big, you cannot put a price on what Zidane Chara brings to this Boston Bruin defense. All right, uh, frame bridge. All right, if you previously listened to this show, you've heard me talk about frame bridge. Hey, relax, okay? Some people fast forward through these things. Uh, they, may, they make it super easy and affordable to, cus- to custom frame your favorite things. You got a nice dick pic? Ah, they got the frame for you. Um, from art and prints and posters to the photos on your phone, their expert team handcrafts each custom frame here in the U.S. Handcrafts it. I thought they just measured it. They handcraft this thing and will send it to you in, in days, not weeks or months. All right, that's why you're going to love FrameBridge. That's why sending a custom frame picture with FrameBridge is the go-to gift this holiday season. That's a great gift. You don't have any fucking money? Just frame a cell phone picture of you and the other person and just write like friends or smile, put a little emoji on it. This is beautiful. These guys are going to save you a ton of money. In a few minutes, you can build and order a thoughtful personal gift on FrameBridge.com's website or straight from your phone. Their expert team will handcraft a custom frame or just measure it. Picture a frame that fucking fits it, right? For your picture, and we'll drive it straight to, to you or someone on your list. And the best part, FrameBridge starts at just $39 and shipping is free. In a few minutes, you can create a meaningful custom gift for everyone on your list. A picture of your sibling for you. Uh, you know what you guys got to do for Christmas? Just get a fucking, just take a selfie of yourself and then send it to FrameBridge and get a handcrafted photo and just, you know, send it to everybody. My gift to all of you this holiday season is a picture of me. This way, even though when I'm not there, I can always be there. All right, pick the perfect frame at FrameBridge.com. You can preview your item in all their frame styles, then upload a picture. You can even frame an Instagram photo. The talent experts at FrameBridge will print and frame your item and ship it straight to you or your loved one. Your gift arrives in days, completely ready to hang and includes a handwritten gift note. Let FrameBridge help you win the holidays with a thoughtful gift that's easy. Right now, you, all you got to do is go to FrameBridge.com and use the promo code BURR. You'll save 15% off your first order. And remember, place your orders by December 18th to ensure delivery by Christmas. That's promo code BURR. Holiday deadline is December 18th. Okay, next up on the docket. On it, Joe Rogan's company. On it has a new product. It's called Emulsified MCT Oil. The fuck is that? MCT Oil is one of the fastest sources of clean fuel for the body and the brain. It's one of the best ways to power up your performance or kickstart a weight management program. You gotta want it! There's a, there are lots of MCT Oil brands out there. I didn't know that. But there's none like Emulsified MCT Oil from On It. Available in three delicious flavors, coconut, vanilla, and strawberry. Oh, my DNA. Coconut head, vanilla skin, strawberry pubes. Emulsified MCT oil makes, mixes like a cream easily. And you're more like Gary Shetfield. You rub it on your arms there. And your morning coffee without the need for a blender. No mess, no cleanup. You can even mix it into your favorite foods. Right now, if you go to onnit.com slash bill, you can get Onnit's emulsified MCT oil for 12% off. That's onnit.com. Did I just gurgle? Bill to get emulsified slash bill to get emulsified MCT oil for 12% off. Uh, for any reason, if you don't like it, they'll give you your money back. No questions asked. They'll just mean mug you as you walk out the store. They're all fucking jacked. Got those neck muscles, you know, like they could shrug their shoulders for days. Why? Because they're taking their emulsified MCT oil. You got nothing to lose. Go to onnit.com slash bill now 
and get on it. All right, how many more of these motherfuckers? We got three more. Let's get the first three out of the way. What do you say? Tipsy elves, everyone. This is not a porno, by the way. (coughs) Tipsy elves. Have you ever wanted to take advantage of an elf, but it wasn't drunk enough? Welcome to Tipsy Elves, everyone. Everyone needs an ugly Christmas sweater this time of year. Um, If you want bragging rights for the most talked about sweater at your Christmas parties, listen up. Talk about your Tipsy Elves sweater and other products you saw on this website. Oh, God, this is like a fucking hipster website. Um, Oh, that's just great. That's so bad. It's good. Uh, Tipsy Elves has hundreds of Christmas sweaters designs that are nothing like you've seen before. They're not for the faint of heart. Check out the all-new 2016 sweaters. You won't find them anywhere else. Tipsy Elves sweaters are all about fun, but are serious on quality and construction. When you're shopping for your ugly sweater, check out the other holiday and collegiate attire for yourself or as a gift like adult onesies. What is that? Feet pajamas with like a dick hole cut out? Huh? You got like a fucking, what do they call that when the chick's at the truck stop and it's just the hole and the guy sticks, a, a glory hole. You got a glory hole in the front, you know? They're made out of wood. They're wood pajamas and you just stick your dick through the fucking, the knocked out knot in the wood. All right, for men, interactive sweaters, beer pong, cornhole, and Christmas suits. I didn't want to know what that is. For women, holiday leggings, sweater dresses, and pajamas. Right now, my listeners get 20% off tipsyelves.com on anything they order on their site. Shop now so you have the best selection to choose from and you have, the t- uh, you have it in time for your ugly Christmas sweater party. Go to tipsyelves.com, enter my code BURR at checkout to get 20% off uh, site-wide discounts. That's tipsyelves.com slash BURR, right? No, tipsyelves.com and then my code BURR. All right. Are you kidding me? Oh, I still got three more to go. All right, fuck this, dude. Fuck this, okay? Let's plow ahead. Where are we? Huh? 32 minutes in. Was there anything else I wanted to fucking talk about? Um, oh, dude, I started going through my shit because I'm, I'm, I'm selling my Prius, right? So I'm going back and I'm trying to find the title to my car. And of course, I can't find this fucking thing. And I find the title to my wife's car, to my car, in my old truck, and I also found a copy of a title to this 88 Honda Accord I had like fucking 15 years ago. I had the DX, or was the LX, you had the LX, five-speed manual transmission, what a great fucking car that was, god damn it, I love that car, um, I found a copy of that, but nothing for the Prius, so now I gotta go fucking to the DMV and get a copy of it, and all that bullshit, um, to end up getting rid of that shit move on with my fucking life. Um, and I got a fucking goddamn conference call coming up here in 10 minutes. I'll have to finish the rest of the podcast later. I apologize. You know, it's what it is. Patriots, Jets, did you watch that? How fucking awful did our defense look in the first fucking half? Good Lord. Um, I mean, I know we're banged up and everything, but uh, I don't know. Remember that time when we traded Richard Seymour a long time ago? And every Patriot fan was like, dude, what the fuck did we do that for? And then the people who were kind of paying attention were like, well, look, it was a deal. Next year, he was going to be up for free agency. He was going to ask for a zillion dollars, and we knew we weren't going to give it to him, and then we would have got nothing for him. So we traded him the year before. I went on this website, and they showed all the, the trickle down from that thing, that trade, um, and all the players we got, how we could be more aggressive because of what we got for Richard Seymour. I'm hoping the same thing is that happened this year with, uh, I don't even know if we traded Chan- Chandler Jones or we lost him to free agents, free agency, but uh, that fucking dude that we sent to Cleveland, which I keep, Jamie Collins, maybe that'll turn into something, but uh, I don't know. As unhealthy as we are, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know. I'm not giving up. I never give up. I'm just saying, you know what the fuck? It's the goddamn Jets. They were fucking going crazy, too. Every fucking play they made, they were going fucking nuts. You know? Like, they just fucking... Like, that was their playoff game, which I respected. They fucking came to play. But anyways, so this whole fucking weekend, all I did was watch football, and I I was looking for that title. And in the process of looking for the title, I cleaned up a bunch of my shit. And I was kind of thinking with a kid coming along... um, 
I'm not going to have time to do shit, but life is going to keep hitting me. So I want to know where all my insurance forms are, where every fucking piece of legal shit that I need. You know what I mean? Like, do you have your tracking number and all that? I'm getting all of that stuff organized. And um, I had all this fucking shit that I held on to. For, I had like fucking my insurance, auto insurance contract from like 2007 until now. And I'm like, it expires 12 months after you get it, Bill. You've held on to this shit for nine years longer than you need to. So I shredded a lot of shit, but uh, underrated. Just finally going through your office and just organizing everything. I kind of know where like everything is now. And uh, I want to I want to do that kind of for everything that I have. So when my kid comes here and then takes a marker out and draws all over everything, I'll know where the fucking insurance shit is. Um, all right, let's let's read. Um, let's read some. Uh, some questions here for the week. Um, Stanhope special. This is somebody writing in about the great Doug Stanhope. It said, hey, Bill, used your promo code to sign up for CISO so I could watch Stanhope's new special. I've heard nothing but great things. He said, holy shit, you're still my favorite, Bill, but Stanhope is a genius. Why do you guys always have to do that? You still got to take the piss out of me. I know he's fucking tremendous. You know, why can't you just say this guy's a great comedian? I'll tell you, Bill, I ain't fucking, but this guy over here, you know? Everybody on the internet's got to do that. If you have a good band, someone's got to just sit there and be like, dude, I love you guys, but it's fucking Doug Stanhope, man. He's a fucking, I know he's a genius. You didn't have to take the piss out of me. He's fucking better than I am. You fucking cunt. Um, he said, I wish more people knew about him. I felt the same way about you years ago when you were just a comedy baby. Uh, tell you people at Netflix to give them the Chappelle treatment. Uh, love you, man. Um, yeah, I've heard nothing but great shit about that. Um, sorry, that's the last of the, the, the Ricola. Eating on the mic. Kind of a fucking amateur am I. Um, all right, well, what you're telling me, every comedian has known about Doug Stanhope since probably the late 90s. And um, Doug is, um, you ever watch those cop movies? You know, you know that guy, he always has to turn in his badge because he's doing shit outside the system, but he's got a good heart, and in the end, he arrests the bad guy, and it's all good. That's who Stanhope is, right? But the entertainment industry hasn't figured that out yet. But eventually, he will be standing on their fucking city hall steps as they give him the key to the city. That's what I'm hoping. But um, my rule with all of these guys is I don't watch this stand-up special just because I can't have an hour and an hour and a half of their shit floating around in my head because it'll influence, you know, I'm too paranoid about that. But my rule is that with all these guys, Rogan, Stanhope, Louis, Chappelle, all of these guys, that if they come into a comedy club that I'm at and uh, they're going to go do a set, I will watch them. That's how I do it. But I, I don't watch their specials because I'm too paranoid about any sort of overlap or whatever. But um, having said that, every time Doug Stanhope's specials come out, always, 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 for like three to six months afterwards, comics are just taking me aside going, dude, have you seen Stanhope's new fucking special? Um, yeah, he's fucking incredible. And um, I don't know, well, I don't know why. I don't know why, what it is about comics like that that they just, uh, I don't know, the industry just w won't give the same. I don't, you know what it is at the end of the day? If you ever have a question about an artist you like, just imagine Doug Stanhope on TV trying to sell you Ritz crackers. Okay, how long could he talk about those crackers before they would have a major fucking problem? I think that's what it comes down to. All right? <coughs> There's the people that are truly are the greats, and then there's the people that are really good, but they won't fucking, you know, they can sell a box of Ritz crackers. That's what it kind of comes down to. And Doug Stanhope is one of those fucking guys. It's what makes him great. So maybe that's what it is. I like that there's guys like that. You got to have the fucking rogue guys. You know what I mean? You can't have everybody just fucking hanging out with, uh, I don't know, Eddie Showbiz, you know, at a fucking, you know, an election party. You know what I mean? And talking about issues. Hi, I'm fucking Sandy San, Sam Cakes, and I'm here to talk about the fucking, uh, the slaughter of baby seals and all of that, you know, that mainstream, like, um, step off your private jet 
take the time to give a fuck for 20 minutes before you get back to yelling at your personal assistant. There's that level of uh, connecting with people. And then there's what Stanhope does, where he fucking goes where they're at. That guy has literally played, I would say, you know, let's say there's 10,000 comedy clubs in this country. He's played at least 9,998 of them. That fucking guy has played... As much as I've done a bunch of play, that guy has been fucking everywhere. And that's why, that's why he's as good as he is. That and his work ethic, he's fucking prolific. He's one of my favorites of all time. So I wish I knew what the name of this special was. Maybe I can like go to look at, I'll look that up. You know what? I got to hit pause. I got this fucking conference call. I'll be right back. And I'll also have the name of the special. What do you think about that? And this will be like fucking like an eighth of a second in your life. Just like those fucking millennials with their virtual reality glasses. What's that over there? Whoa, it's good. I, I fucking hate that commercial where the kids are sitting there freaking the fuck out like they don't realize that it's not a real world. And then the greedy corporate cunts, then what do they got to do? They got to have the old curmudgeon guy like me, actually older than me. And then, oh, what are you kids doing? And then he puts it on. And then, of course, he's completely enamored, Right. And now he's going to be into the shit. Get the fuck out of here. Fuck those glasses. I swear to God, man. Like, the amount of people that are going to get mugged while they have those fucking things on in public. Because I'll tell you right now, these fucking kids are so goddamn stupid. They'll wear one of those in, like, on a city bus and just fucking have it on there. You know what I mean? It's like walking into, like, one of those little fucking baskets with, what, Cobra in there. And you stick your head in with your virtual reality glass glasses and you can't see the snake anymore because you're in fucking uh, Middle Earth. Oh, the old man's coming out of me this week. All right, hang on a second. All right, and I'm back. Just like that, an hour of fucking conference calling, huh? Don't you wish you were me? Is there anything better than a conference call? Hey, let's get on and make a call and have a conference. Everybody can talk and share ideas. Have another hour of your life go by that you're never going to get back. All right. You know, this is how old I am. You know what's on my Christmas list this year? You know, it is pajamas. I've had the same pair of fucking pajamas for like, I don't, I don't even know how long. Like, I don't know, maybe uh, early 2000s. You know? I'm trying to think of all the shit that I've watched on TV in these jam jams, and they've just had it. It's fucking over. And I've actually dropped, not even the hint, I just demanded. And you get to, when you get to be my age, because no one gives a shit about you anymore, you can't ask for something for, for Christmas. You got to start, you got to make demands with like a touch of a threat. Okay? I'm just saying, okay? Just throw, put this out there. It would be in everybody's best interest if I got some new pajamas. This Christmas. That's all I'm saying, okay, huh? You like where you're living? You like this food? There better be some jam jams under the fucking tree there. Um, anyways, and then no matter what, then you end up being wrong. Like, I, I had a fucking argument with my wife this week about the way she fucking, you know, stacks up the dishes in the sink. You know what I mean? I don't know if your wife does this shit, but there'll be like a pot sitting in the fucking sink and then they have a plate right what do they do they stick the plate on top of the thing and then they take another bowl and they stick it on top of the plate and then you just got this leaning tower of horse shit in your fucking sink it's like why don't you put the plate underneath the pot and then just see if the pot can fit in the bowl or the bowl can fit in the fucking pot and then it takes like a third of the space you know you ever think of doing to that fucking Get, get, you know, make rather, rather make it look like there's 10 weeks of fucking dishes here. This is like two meals. You know, one of those fucking, one of those fucking dumb arguments where you end up getting in your car and driving away. And then afterwards, you're just sitting there going, what the fuck? I'm literally driving down the street right now, contemplating giving this woman everything that I own and moving into a one bedroom apartment over the way she stacks dishes in the sink. But I'll tell you, when you live with somebody... It seems so fucking important. All right, time off. Dear Billy Body, <clears throat> I think you're awesome. Thank you. And admittedly, I have a crush on you. And I'm a lady. There you go. I thought the left term was going to be, and I'm a dude. Um, I love that you take care of yourself and are always striving to be better. This is great. I, you know what? If I were you guys listening to this right now, I would be highly suspect of whether or not I actually wrote this in. 
Uh, my husband and I haven't seen you live yet, and we want we want to this year. If you happen to be coming back to Wisconsin, well, where the hell were you a few months ago? You know, when did you develop this crush in October? I was there in September. Uh, do you think you'll be touring as much, or will you be taking the year off to spend time with your newborn? Love you, and I love Nia. Um, oh, I'm totally going to be the absentee father. I already have that worked out, you know? I'm going to be doing like 56 weeks on the road. No, obviously, my schedule would be a little bit different. Um, be honest with you, I, I don't know. Um, I do know, however, that... Um, you know, when I was getting ready to do my special, rather than doing one night in every city, you know, when I did that little, I played a smaller theater and I spent a week in Durham, like just Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And I had, it was so much more enjoyable way of doing the road rather than doing one night in Durham, one night in fucking Poughkeepsie, one night here. It just becomes a fucking thrash. And when you're an older fella like myself, you know, I like going to a place hanging out with the people, seeing where they eat, going to a game. That's how I always fucking did it. So I'm going to try to do more of that. And I was just in Madison. And funny you should bring up going back to Milwaukee, uh, uh, Wisconsin was I haven't been to Milwaukee in, um, well, I guess it was October of, that's amazing. I can always remember this. It was like October of 2015. So it's been, uh, we'll call it December at this point. So it's been 14 months. So um, definitely in 2017, not only will I be coming back to Milwaukee, uh, I, I plan on spending like uh, three, four days there because that Milwaukee had not only a great cigar bar, it had the best fucking steam of any place I've ever been to. And it was at a hotel called The Fister. I swear to God, it, the hotel is called The Fister. It, it's P.F. I-S-T-E-R. If you're in Milwaukee, dude, I'm telling you, man, Milwaukee, don't sleep on Milwaukee. Great people, great food, great fucking lakefront property for a song, right? And the sickest fucking steam room you're ever going to go into. You get your own private, like, lifestyles of the rich and famous fucking, it's it's unbelievable. So, um, <clears throat> you know, when you get to be my fucking age, that's the type of shit that's appealing to you on the road. You know what I mean? It's not like, oh, dude, you got to go to Miami. They got all these hot chicks down there. I'm a fucking creepy old married guy. Where is there a steam room? (laughs) (coughs) Listen to me. I got tuberculosis. I ain't got time for the hooahs. Anyways, uh, so, yeah, tonight I'm actually doing the Steve Allen Theater and whatever the fuck they're calling it now, and I'm just basically running my whole new hour. I'm so fucking excited. I've gotten past the whole morning period of missing my old jokes. I'm past the whole, now I'm not as funny as I was on stage. Now, you know, I took all the bullets out of the gun. I'm shooting fucking blanks up here. Um, this is my favorite fucking thing in the world. I'm so excited tonight about the show um, and just seeing where it goes. And I got a couple of buddies of mine coming down who are musicians so they're going to get to see that whole fucker. Because I already told them, I was like, all right, you guys want to come down? This is going to this is gonna be the real deal. This is not the uh, old tried and true there. All right, coping with being single. Oh, oh I already like this right here. Hey, Billy, master of fuckets. Um, I've been single my entire life. I'm into my later 20s and still haven't found any lady that I really hit it off with. I've struggled with being single for a long time but I've been working through it. I'm okay with it, but I still have my dark moments. My question to you is when you were single for all those years, did you ever get lonely or feel alone? Uh, Did you ever think you'd be single forever? What helped you to endure through those times and how did you cope with it? Yes to all of that. Yep. As I figured some things out, I've been doing bucket list types of stuff that helps me get through it. Yeah, dude, that's a great thing to do when you're single. Go do all that shit you want to do. Because, uh, you know, you meet somebody else, you, uh, you know, you might not have the time. This person says, I've gone to see some of my favorite bands play live. I've traveled a little, and I've been working towards finding a career path that I really enjoy. So I believe I'm doing some good things, but I still have my days when I suffer through it a little. 
Uh, but I've learned to sit in that pain for a bit and find good things. Uh, saying something dumb at work. Oh, that's the next one. I thought that was a guy signing off or the woman, whoever the fuck this is. Um, all right. My question to you is you've been single all those years. Did you ever get lonely or feel alone? Here's the thing. I was never lonely for the first, I don't know how many years of my life until I had a girlfriend and then lost my girlfriend. And then after that, that's the first time I felt like, oh, I don't have a chick. It's weird. I didn't have my first serious girlfriend until I was like 23. Something like that. 22, 23 years old. So I was fine with being single. And that thing lasted like, I don't know, like eight, nine months. And uh, I ended up breaking up with her. And that was right before I started doing stand-up. And um, I remember the first six weeks of being like, fuck, how long is it going to take for me to get over this person? And um, it's weird, man. Like getting over a person, it's like it's like quitting the booze. It's a habit. They're a habit. You know what I mean? Oh, I always call them at this time. Then you, you got to fill up those fucking times. But you just can't fill them up. You kind of got to go through the morning of them not being there anymore. And then you start filling them up with other stuff. But like, dude, I think travel, seeing bands and everything. The great thing is, dude... <clears throat> The fact that you are a lady, the fact that you're single and you feel alone is a very healthy thing. You know what I mean? Now, if you were totally fucking single and you didn't feel lonely at all, well, I guess maybe, you know, maybe you're just a fucking someone who doesn't want to be with anybody. That could also be good. As long as you're not out killing people. You know what I mean? As long as you don't feel the need to hunt. As long as you're not feeling that, and as long as you're all right with whatever it is you're doing, then um, you should be fine. Dude, you're in your fucking late 20s, dude. Trust me. Someday you're going to be married. You're going to have a fucking kid coming like I got right now. And you all of a sudden, all your drum videos, you're thinking, I'm going to get rid of those. I got to get rid of all this shit. I got to get rid of all of this stuff. And there's this feeling that I'm having right now of, will I ever play drums again? But fortunately... I married the coolest woman ever, so I just was able to sit down with her. This, this might help you if you're afraid to get in a relationship because you feel like you're going to lose all of this stuff. You just let the person you're with know what's important. I already said to my wife, I said, listen, here's the deal. Like once a week, okay, you pick a day once a week when this kid is not sleeping through the night and you can just go somewhere, get a massage or just go someplace and fucking sleep. Or I'll take the kid and go drive around. I'll let you sleep for fucking hours and hours. Whatever the hell it is, okay? All you got to do is let me keep playing drums. Taking drum lessons and that shit. That'll be my spa thing. Because I don't really need to sleep. Because I'm a fucking lunatic. And also, I'll still get to do the road twice a month. And, you know, I'll use that time to sleep. I'll do my shows at night. And then I'll go right to the hotel. And I will sleep till the fucking cats come home. The cows come. Whatever the fucking animal is. And then I'll come back recharged. You know what I mean? But we, we make sure that we kind of work that stuff out with each other. So um, if you're afraid to get in a relationship, just know that there's uh, cool people out there. As long as you, uh, I don't know. Yeah, you never hear me say this, but women in general are pretty cool if you just tell them what the fucking deal is. Um, but I have issues with women. So even as I said that, just picturing how many women just went like, oh my God, yes. That, like that annoyed me, even though they're agreeing with me. It's weird. I got a lot of fucking issues. So um, yeah, I definitely fe- I felt like I was never going to meet the one. I felt like there was something wrong with me and all of this type of shit. Just know this. Every one of your friends that's in a relationship is secretly envious of you, even if they're with the right person. That's how much fucking work it is, you know? Every once in a while, you know, I look at fucking, um, you know, I'll look at a, I'll look at a playboy like Joe DeRosa and I'll be like, God damn it, man. What the fuck did he's got? He's, you know, he's, he's, he's living the life, you know, but then, you know, you come home and your wife makes some fucking cookies. You're like, oh, this is pretty cool too. All right. Saying something dumb at work. So what I'm saying to this person, you, you, you're fine, dude. You're in your late twenties. Um, the same way that you have goals with um, your career and bucket list stuff, you, have, you should have some goals about the kind of person that you want to be with. Like uh, women after, actually do shit like that. Women actually sit down and think about the kind of guys don't do that. We just sort of ping pong around. I'll stick my fucking dick in that. You know, we're idiots. Um, but if you actually, you know, get a little Bill Belichick, you know, see what's missing, you know, from your half. See what you're looking for. 
What do you want? You know, do you want a woman that wants kids? Do you want a woman that can cook? Are you traditional? Do you want a career woman? Like, what do you want? You know, I can tell you right now, if you want a woman that can cook, we'll actually sit down and cook. Woo! I'll tell you right now. That's like, uh, I don't know. You know, like every once every, I don't know how many years they have, they have that, that 1983 draft. Like women do not, fu- women's do not be cooking anymore. All this feminism shit. It's really a sad thing, but men have, you know, it's our fault because we, we, we didn't put a value on it. Christ, I'm out there busting my ass. You're in here pickling cucumbers, right? We just gave them shit. Making a meal for somebody is one of the nicest things you could ever do, you know? But what happened, huh? We talked shit. We gave them, we didn't give them a fucking respect. Them. Now look at them. They don't want to cook or be mothers. They're out there running around willy-nilly wearing pantsuits, running, in, running for president of the United States. I mean, that, that, that's a man job. <laughs> kidding you know the funniest fucking thing ever is how sick you have to be to want to be president the fact that hillary clinton is depressed right now that she didn't get a job where she was gonna have to put her head in the pillow every night knowing she just made a decision that bombs were just dropped and possibly landed on somebody's baby and she she's she's depressed that she didn't get that fucking job it's unbelievable what do you think her pajamas look like she definitely has the fucking guy ones right like the flannel ones (laughs) wearing the pantsuits um i like the pantsuits i don't know why everybody gave a shit about it i always like rhoda you know rhoda mary tyler moore they fucking filled those things out you know walking around with your little bunsies up against that rayon all right say something dumb at work saying something dumb at work okay what do we got here um ah fuck you guys mind if i just do the last bit of you know what that's a cunty move i'll read this and then i'll do the advertising Hey, Bill, longtime fan, probably listen to you too much. Once again, you start with the compliment, then you give me the old fucking shank to the kidney. Longtime fan, probably listen to you too much. All right, too, too much, when it's too much, that's, that's two O's. All right? All right, here's my problem. I was, at, I was at work party, I think you mean at a work party, talking to my colleagues I work as an RN in an ICU. Okay, that's a registered nurse in an intensive care unit. Huh? I have some nurses in my family. Uh, We have a new to our unit hire joining us, but she's worked as a nurse for 25 years already. My friend said she's joining my rotation. I say out loud in my typical Bill Burr uh, inflection, Oh, Jesus. No, how cheese. Another old broad on our line there. Several colleagues heard this, and now every day is some new twist on my comment. Some chirping is fine, but half the unit is over 50. I want some joke comment. I don't want some joke comment to me, haunt me for years, Bill. How do I get this to go away? Thanks. Um, I, I would just say it with them. I just, I wouldn't back off it. I would just keep doing the Archie Bunker. Oh, geez, another old broad on our line there. And then when they, they, yeah, is this lady too old? Oh, God, all of you with your menopause there. But you can't do that at work now. You can't do that at work now because you're not making it a safe place. This isn't a safe space. Ugh. Oh, my God. That alone, that alone gave Trump about 200,000 votes. <laughs> Fucking adults saying you're not making this a safe space. I just fucking did. They all have a meeting and they came up with that fucking horrific. That, that what? What was the second choice? I just don't understand that. I, I you know something. I have to be honest with you. I don't know how you get out of that. And right there, that's why I do what I do for a fucking living because there's no way I could be in that level of a childish fucking environment. That people, ooh, what did you mean about that? What, what, how many fucking thoughts have you had in your head today, you old fucking bag, that if they were publicized, that you would even still have a job as a nurse? Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, you know, you know what? Just, just, you know, women like sweets. Just come in, just bake a fucking pie or some shit. Ugh. Anyways, I'm, I'm sorry you're going through that. I'm sorry you were quoting me. But you know what? You also kind of blamed me a little bit there. We say you listen to me too much. You you, you were throwing a little bit of blame. You went a little Peyton Manning there. We had protection issues. That's what you just did to me there. Um, 
I don't know. I would just be, you still bringing that? You still bringing that up? You should have heard what I said this morning or something like that. I would just do that. Um, <laughs> that is kind of funny. Who gives a shit? Do you like the job? It all depends on how much you like the job. What? She's old. You're all old. I wouldn't fuck any of you. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to get out of that. Um, if anybody has any suggestions, tweet it at me and I'll fucking retweet it. Maybe this person follows me on Twitter. You can help them out. Uh, would it help if I know if you were a man or a woman? I have no idea. All right. Dollar Shave Club. Um, I'm guessing a man. If you're a woman, you're the coolest woman ever that you said that. No, they're all broad here. All right. Dollar Shave Club. Dollar Shave Club delivers amazing, affordable razors right to your door every month so you can get a great shave. But razors aren't the only thing you need in the bathroom. What about some shower stuff? Huh? What about when you're washing off the old taint there? Turns out Dollar Shave Club thought of that too. They just came out with a new line of shower products, shampoo and body wash called The Wanderer. Well, I'm a type of guy who likes to wash his nuts. The fragrances are unlike anything on the market. They're subtle and actually smell like real natural ingredients. There are a lot of body washes out there that make you smell like a teenager. This mint and cedarwood body wash is amazing. It makes you smell incredible. It's like you're eating ice cream next to the fireplace. Um, <laughs> you got to give it a try. What the fuck is so great about mint and cedarwood body? Are those two different ones, I hope? Um, like you're fucking eating ice cream over Ron Burgundy's house? Rich mahogany. Uh, you got to give it a try. Once you're in the club, you'll see the products are amazing. The service is world class. There's no long-term commitments, no hidden fees, and you can cancel whenever you want. And best of all, they're giving away a one-month trial of any one of their fucking raises for a dollar with free shipping. And after that, it's just a few bucks a month. Get your online dollar trial at dollarshaveclub.com slash burr. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash burr. Oh, who's next? Two more to go. Oh, MVMT, Movement Watches, pronounced movement, was founded on the belief that style shouldn't break the bank. The watchmaker's goal is to change the way consumers think about fashion by offering high quality, quality minimalist products at revolutionary prices. With over 500,000 watches sold to customers in 160 plus countries around the fucking world, Movement Watches has solidified itself as the world's fastest growing watch company. All right. Uh, holiday thought status. Please be conversational. Choose one and make this your own. All right. I'm going to choose this one. We get it. Fuckos. Holiday shopping can be fucking hot. This is me making my own. I just say fucking Boston accent. But thanks to Movement Watches. All that gift-giving, horseshit anxiety can disappear with the press of the button. These watches make the perfect purchase for just about any person in your life, guy or girl. And remember, they just start at 95 bucks. You know what? Even if you don't like somebody, spending 95 bucks is too much money. Only get this for people that you care about. You know what I mean? Get everybody else, you can get a fucking bumper sticker. All right, get 15% off today with free shipping and free returns by going to movementwatches.com slash burr. This watch has a really clean design, all right? Seriously, evidently I've been getting compliments on the one that I don't wear ever since I put it on. Now is the time to step up your watch game. Go to movementwatches.com slash burr. Join the movement. Get a $95 watch for 500 bucks. No, $500 watch for 95 bucks today. Lastly, but not leastly, stamps.com, everybody. Oh, Jesus, St. Nick is coming here for all the good Christians out there. He's a saint, but he doesn't care about Muslims, Jews, or fucking uh, Buddhist people, right? What about all those uh, aboriginals? Whatever the fuck they worship, huh? How come Santa Claus doesn't go to them? You know why? Because they'd be like, oh, my God, it's another white man, and they fucking put a poison dart in him, and it'd serve him right, you know? It'd serve him right, even though he didn't do anything. He'd be a martyr. You know, this big stupid red suit laying face down in it, right? Stamps.com. With the holidays almost, I'm surprised the government has never tried to set up Santa Claus by sending him into some area with his indigenous people. Just setting him up for a fight the way we did when we took over this fucking country, you know? So we could justify the genocide of those wonderful people that when they killed a squirrel, they used all of it. Unlike us, what did we do, huh? Threw the inside at a fucking womp rat and then used the rest as a hat. For what? As a goof? Stamps.com, everybody. White people, the frat boys of people. (laughs) 
I'm sorry. Stamps.com. Um, with the holidays almost here, you don't have time to go to the post office. Well, you do, but who the fuck wants to go? It'll be packed with everyone mailing holiday gifts and packages. So, so do what I do. Do what I do. Use Stamps.com instead. With Stamps.com, you can avoid all the hassle, man, of going to the post office during the busy holiday season. Buy and print official U.S. postage using your own computer or printer. Print the postage for any letter or package the instant you need it. Then the mailman picks it up. You never have to go to the post office again. It's a fucking dream. I use Stamps.com whenever I'm sending out any of my posters, anytime I'm selling some shit at the end of a fucking show. Anytime I think to myself, you know what? I haven't, sh- I haven't shaked enough sweaty fucking palms of complete strangers. You know what I mean? I want to feel that warm armpit of a taller person as they put their arm around me, sitting right on my shoulder, seeping into my fucking button down. That's when I send out all my posters, everybody. You can print the postage and all that shit. Then the mailman picks it up. All right, right now, uh, I can do you better. I can get you an even better offer than what's on the homepage. Sign up for Stamps.com right now and use my last name, Burr, to get a four-week trial plus a $110 bonus offer. That includes postage and the digital scale. Go to Stamps.com. Click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in Burr. That's Stamps.com. Enter Burr. Okay, it's over. All right. Let's let's finish off the rest of these here. Okie dokie. Fun times in Syria. Billy the Cunt. It's Martin from Sweden. Thank you for this podcast. No worries. Uh, It's been more than 10 years since I was almost raped in Syria. What the fuck? Although time passes, the story seems to never get old. All right. You know, are, are you really just going to fuck with me on this goddamn level here? Am I supposed to believe this is true? How time flies. It's like you're, you're looking back fondly on this. This is weird. I was 17 when me and my class went on a school trip to Syria. Puts in parentheses, Middle East. Go fuck yourself. Jesus, I know I'm American. I know where Syria is. All right. One day, all of my classmates were out snorkeling. I stayed in the hostel bed because I had a fever. Two aspirins later, I found myself out looking for my class in sauna-like temperatures with a foolish mindset. My blonde, blue-eyed nature fig- figured the aspirin had cured my fever, so I was in quite good spirits for about seven miles of searching for the other Swedes. This is creeping me out. Now the fever was kicking back and in at this point. Uh... And I'd given up my endeavors of snorkeling. I didn't know where I was or how to get back to my hostel. At that moment, a taxi pulled over and the driver asked if I wanted to to get a lift. I said I didn't have any money to offer, but he insisted that no money was needed for the ride. Oh, Jesus is right. Yes. High fever and good amounts of gullibility led me to step into the cab and off we went. Hi, welcome to Syria, the taxi guy said. You are very beautiful. I didn't want to be rude, so I said thanks back at him. Then he asked me if I liked women. Sure, I replied. Then he asked if I liked big women. Sure, I said. He said, ah, you like big because same with your dick, he said. What? At this point, I regretted getting to the, what the fuck? Ah, you like big because same with your dick, he said. Okay, I thought this was a woman. So it's a guy, and now this dude... Oh, Jesus, here we go. At this point, I regret getting to the taxi very much in in the moment after he was reaching for my package while he was driving. Oh, dude, that's... Oh, were you in the front seat? That's when you got to do... What was that fucking Schwarzenegger movie where he gets on the plane with that guy and he pretends to tie his shoe and he comes up with the elbow of death and drives the spine of his nose into his brain and then puts his little fucking... uh, Tommy Bahama had over his face and he goes, don't disturb him. He's dead tired. That's what you needed to do. Was that raw deal? I think you needed to go raw deal there. Anyways, I say no stop. I said, but the taxi driver was very sus- persistent. He wondered why he couldn't touch my penis like I owed him the right to do so. I was feeling extremely vulnerable being a teenager foreigner and having a high fever and all. I shouted at him to stop the car, but he kept on going. Dude, you got to start going Dave the Hammer Schultz here, right? You got to fucking, you got to start swinging, man. Uh, but he kept on going. I thought about jumping out of the car, but I was, it was going way too fast. I also didn't want to start a fight and risk crashing the car. 
Ah, Jesus. At some point, dude, you got to pick your poison. Did it have airbags? Picture, pictures of Taliban rape caves with Pulp Fiction gimp suits and gag balls was entering my mind as the taxi car continued to drive on without any intent to pull over. This is really happening. Oh, my Lord, I thought to myself. Luckily, we came to a traffic light, and I managed to get out of the car and on the pavement. I started running when I heard him screaming at me. One Syrian pound, mister. Oh, God, now you got to get paid for getting... You got to pay him for molesting you? I got over the experience pretty soon, and it have not affected my life to any extent. No fucking way. People sometimes want me to tell the almost rape story and give impressions of the taxi driver. I can't help to think how unfunny it would be if I were a girl almost getting raped in Syria. Yeah, but you're a guy, so it's fucking... Everything that happens to a guy is hilarious. Nobody gives a shit. My question to you is, why is this kind of a... Why is this story kind of funny if it happened to men, but awful in every way if it happened to a woman? Your thoughts on that after you go fuck yourself. P.S. Say hi to lovely Nia. Um, This is why it's funny. Because you're able to fight them off. It's a guy with an accent grabbing your dick. When you tell the story, oh, my friend, my friend, just like your dick. Beep, beep. Right? It's just hilarious. I remember one night we were down the comedy cellar and we were all telling stories about getting molested as kids. And it was one of the funniest nights I've ever had. It was so fucking cathartic. And we were just crying, laughing. And I remember all the comics were, you know, I don't know, had a different upbringing. We're looking at it like it was fucked up, but it was fucking hilarious to me. Um, and if you told me this story, I would be laughing my ass off. Still knowing that you, you probably have some sort of fucking issue. It all depends. It all depends. You know, if that was the first person that ever touched you, you know, if no girl ever gave you a hand job, the fact that it was the first guy that ever did it, you know, his hairy fucking hand coming over, you know, that could possibly fuck you up. But, you know, if you had a little bit of sexual activity, maybe it doesn't, you know, it's kind of like, you know, if you're a relief pitcher and you, you got a, you got some saves under your belt, you let up a home run. Yeah. Give me another fucking ball. But if that's your first fucking pitch, I mean, that could fuck with you. Um, why is it not funny uh, when it happens to a woman? It's the same reason why it's it, like watching a guy get punched in the head is fucking funny. You know, if he was like talking shit, it's fucking funny. You know what I mean? But like, you know, kids, women, animals, like there's just never anything funny about watching them get abused. But there's just something hilarious about guys. I would say the reason why you get having your dick grabbed and get molested is funny is be, the same reason why the Three Stooges is funny. You know, imagine the Three Stooges if it was women, you know, grabbing each other by the hair and slapping each other in the face. <laughs> Maybe that'd be a little funny. I don't know. It's just like a guy thing. We like slapstick and there's just something funny about him grabbing your fuck stick in some car and then he charged you <laughs> one Syrian pound. You know, what it really comes down to is I imagine being gay is not accepted even remotely in Syria. So this guy thought like, all right. Even if this doesn't go down, or if it does go down, this story leaves this country and goes back to Sweden. Um, so in the way, I'm going to say the cab driver was the victim and not you, and stop being so selfish. No, I'm fucking with you. Uh, I'm sorry that happened to you. Um, what are you going to do? I mean, I mean, you were kind of asking for it because you were on cold medication. You know, I'm going to blame the victim here. Well, I mean, what were you wearing? Um. I don't know, dude. That's one of the more... Uh, I want to say that's one of the more fucked up stories I've ever heard, but uh, yeah, that that's just goes into that file. I've heard enough of those ones. Um, yeah, that's why it's not funny. Um, so I would actually say that you are fucked up. There's no way you're not fucked up because that happened to you. And there's um, there's that feeling where it's just like, why is that funny when that happens to a guy and then you feel like you can't fucking... Uh, that you should just, yeah, you know, I'm over it. Like, why would that's a horrific fucking thing that happened to you? And I'm even like glancing over the whole thing because it's a guy. Like, hey, you know, fucking shake it off. Shake it off. I and mean, that's part of growing up. There's always, I mean, you have a paper route or something like that. There'll be some weirdo coming at you junk at some point. <laughs> <coughs> but that's just how it is. I remember when that fucking, um, that lady cut the dude's dick off and put it in the garbage disposal. One of those shows, it's not The View. I think it's The Talk. The Asian lady, she was reading it. And as she was reading the details, they were all snickering, laughing. 
And I remember the bit I was doing. What if some guy cut a woman's titty off and threw it in the garbage disposal? I mean, they would have done a week-long special on that, and they would have tried to help the lady out, raise some money to get her a prosthetic, you know what I mean? So a bra wouldn't be all lopsided. That's what the fuck they do. But it happens to a guy. It's just fucking hilarious. And I, I also think that that's why guys are so fucking funny, you know? Because, you know, if a woman gets molested, it's a tragedy. If it happens to a guy, it's a sketch. We really don't have any options. (laughs) You just got to shake it off, man. (laughs) You know, having said all that, dude, I'm sorry that happened to you. I'm sure you're emotionally fucked up about it, but I would love to hear that story one time because I want to hear you imitating the guy, you know, and then listen to everybody interrupting. So wait, you how fast? Where you going, dude? You couldn't jump out of the car? He's grabbing your dick. And then everybody be laughing, going, Yeah, but if you jumped out, then he'd be like holding onto your dick, like just half in the car, half out of the car, right? Stretching out your dick, you know, and then you have one of those needle dicks because it's not going to give you any more girth. He's just going to, that's what the whole fucking thing would be. And then all your friends would laugh and say that you wanted it. You know what I mean? Why didn't you sit in the back like a normal person? Why did you sit up front? You know, that's what guys would do. And they would laugh. You know, you just laugh your way through it. So anyways, I guess I'm going to stop there on the. uh, (laughs) I can't. Let's stop on something positive. Once again, I have two benefits that are coming up to two friends of mine that are no longer here. Um, Pete Cumming um, Memorial is going to be December 6th at the Laugh Factory. I will tweet that link. And the Patrice O'Neill, the five year anniversary of his passing is today. And um the one truly positive thing that came out of that is we get to remember him and we get to see our friends and we get to raise some money for his loved ones every year. And it's going to be February 21st, a Tuesday, 2017 at the New York city center. Um, Thank you to all who uh, take the time to check it out and buy some tickets. Uh, means the world to me. That's it. Go fuck yourselves. Oh, by the way, if you want to donate to this podcast, uh, and not have to give any money. If you're doing some Christmas shopping on Amazon, go to billbird.com first, click on the podcast page. You click on the Amazon link. It doesn't cost you any any extra money. I just get credit for driving traffic there. If you want to do it, I get it. If you don't, I understand. That's it. Go fuck yourselves, and I'll check in on you on Thursday. <laughs>